Hi, this is Joan Hunter. Welcome to another exciting episode of Miracles Happen. I'm so excited to be sharing with you something very, very exciting that has really meant a lot in my own life. Have you ever had a prophetic word that you just didn't walk out? Have you ever had God speak to you and say, I want you to do this, but hasn't really seen it manifest? Now, I want to really encourage you. This is a time and a season where we're going to see God move on your behalf like never before. And I want to encourage you to stay tuned because I'll be right back. Welcome to Miracles Happen. Joan Hunter has been traveling the world in the healing ministry for more than 45 years. Be aware of what the enemy is trying to do to you and say, no more. She is hosted around the world for healing and miracle services because wherever she goes, miracles happen. Joan shares her tenacious faith in how to pray for the sick. Bringing people here and sending them out to the four corners of the earth. That's my job. She traveled the world with her parents, Charles and Francis Hunter, for over 30 years. I expect a miracle tonight. Joan sees healing, signs, and wonders happen all the time in the name of Jesus, and she wants to share this with you. As anointed as I am, so are you. Whether it's filmed on location at Joan Hunter Ministries in Tomball, Texas, or from around the world, you can be sure to hear good news and receive the resounding message that miracles happen. God has anointed in the area of healing, body, mind, soul, spirit, and finances. So stay tuned and join us for this week's extraordinary episode of Miracles Happen. God is a God of hope who heals the body, spirit, and soul. Are you ready for your miracle? Miracles Happen. I get to tell you about a brand new book. I am so excited about it. And uh, uh, in the year 2020, 2020, I had an opportunity to stay home and refocus, redirect, rethink what my normal life would be. And during that time, I actually wrote four books. One of them we are releasing to you today. It's called Just Don't Quit. Just Don't Quit. Let me tell you what, I had lots of opportunities to quit. Let me repeat, lots and lots of opportunities to quit in my life, even to the point of diagnosed with the breast cancer and, and my life just, you know, it was just, it had been a really great time just to quit and then I wouldn't hurt anymore. And, and yet God says, I have a plan for you. Now, during this plan, it was like I had to make a determination that I was going to live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Well, this book is full of incredible testimonies of people who didn't quit. And uh, the subtitle is Inspiration to Fulfill Your God-Sized Dreams. Your God-Sized Dreams. And this is what's so exciting is that y'all have God-sized dreams that without God, it's not going to happen. Well, I have this book is filled with testimonies of people who there's absolutely no way that they could have done what happened. Have you ever gotten, once again, have you ever gotten a prophetic word going, yeah, that sounds great. Well, in 1985, a friend of mine got uh, married and we performed the wedding and it was so awesome. I gave him a prophetic word that they were going to have a son. So they got so excited. She went and she wrote the son's name in her Bible. Well, you know what happened? She went on to have three girls and it's like, okay, I know I heard God somewhere. There's got to be a boy in here, but they were sure enough, three girls. And, uh, and so along about when she was 47 years old, she goes to the doctor. She goes, I just don't feel very good. Doctor did some blood work. You know, she's, I think it might have diabetes or whatever. He comes back and he says, you're pregnant. And she goes, uh, no, there's 47 years old. There's no way I can be pregnant. My husband and I have not, not even really spoken to each other in the last four years, much less that, except that one time. And let me tell you, that one time got that little boy here. And, and at 47 years old, she births Seth Michael Wynn. And the name that she had in her Bible, hold on to those promises that God's given you because he's given you those promises, not to make you feel bad, but to see them 
fulfilled. And one thing that's really neat is I have another story about the military. And I've actually been to his gravesite at uh, Arlington National Cemetery. And, and that's Audie Murphy. We have just a little clip in there. And he, he applied to go to the Army, the Marines, the Air Force, Navy, and everybody said no, because you're too short. Have you ever applied for a job that you were too short for, too tall, too mm, big for? Okay. And he's like, I know God's called me here. And, and I just want to really encourage you. It doesn't matter your size your weight, what color you are, what color hair you have. The thing is, is what has God called you to do? He was so determined. He even lied about his age. And he lied like about a year just to get in. Finally, somebody took him in and, and made him, and he, long story short, he is the most decorated war veteran that they've ever had. He was good at what he did. And see, the thing is, is what's so important is that against all odds, Audie Murphy made it in, but he was highly, highly decorated for what he did. Of course, then he became a movie star and did a movie about himself, and he played himself in the movie. Well, I have another story, lots of testimonies, and, and you need to hear these things because they are faith-building. And the, another story that's just really exciting is a lady, and I hate to use the word, but she used to work for me. She worked for me for six years. She was amazing, right hand person. Everywhere I went, you know, she would travel with me. She was bilingual. She would do a lot of the foreign things with me, different things like that. And it was just amazing what God did. And, and she was so good. She was really good with customer service and praying. And I mean, the list goes on. She could do pretty much everything in the office. And, and so I, I set up some tickets and bought some tickets. And so I sent her, her the copy of it. She says, I need to speak with you in the morning. I'm like, I don't want to speak with you because you're going to resign. And I'm like, no, 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 no. And uh, so I said, okay. So she comes in and she says, I need to resign. And I'm like, no. I mean, I was not happy. But I'm never going to do anything that's going to keep somebody from fulfilling the call of God in their life because that would not be right to them or me or anybody. And so she was, she, a little pop-up came up and says, if you want to be a flight attendant, you know, for this airlines, click here. So she applied 26,999 other people applied for a few positions. And according to her, she was too old, too short, and too fat. And after a, a month of, you know, the testing and different things like that, they hired my Sarah. They hired my Sarah. And, and I was like, are you kidding? You had 27,000 other people to choose from and you chose her. And I was, I had to get over my attitude, et cetera, because she was such a vital part of this ministry. But I blessed her. If she wanted to be a flight attendant, then go for it. Okay, she passed every test. She passed this, she passed that, you know. Yes, she was under the normal limit height, uh, but she ended up in, and she made up the difference and uh, in her ability, bilingual, different things like that. And so her first flight, it was so exciting. It was roughly about three years ago. Her first flight was 23 years to the date after she laid down the dream of ever becoming a flight attendant. And so God, she is living her dream right now. She has children in Montana and in Newark. And, and so she flies her all the time. Plus here, she can fly anywhere and see them anytime. Well, let me also say, and her grandchildren anytime she wants. She is living the dream. And then her husband can travel with her also, which is Really, really it's happening everywhere. And now you can proclaim it everywhere you go with the Miracles Happen t-shirt and blanket. The t-shirts come in all sizes and a variety of colors, as well as with rhinestones and without. The Miracles Happen t-shirt is available for men and women. Get your shirt today and watch as God opens doors for you to pray for the sick around you. Both the Miracles Happen t-shirts and blanket are a constant reminder for all of us that miracles happen everywhere. And check out His Healing Promises. His Healing Promises is a selection of scriptures on healing read by Joan Hunter. If you need encouragement about your healing or faith to trust God in a difficult time, 
This is for you. Let your spirit be lifted and your hope restored as you listen to God's healing promises over your life. Go to MiraclesHappen.tv now to order your Miracles Happen t-shirt and blanket or your copy of His Healing Promises or call 1-281-789-7500. How many of you in here feel like you are called to some kind of ministry from this starting point that you're at this weekend? Success is not a dirty word. In the next few days, things are going to happen for you. The Lord provided the whole trip, rerouted my trip. As the teaching starts to happen and the importation starts to happen, you're going to be absorbing more and more and more. There's a whole bunch of hidden treasures you haven't tapped into. Tonight, God's going to be releasing things. And what God wants to do, He wants to raise you up and to see you do what He's called you to do. This room is like staring at people on the starting line. God is asking you to run the race. It's just an amazing feeling. It's with purpose that we launch you into what God has for you. I want your level of expectancy, your level of faith to rise to a new level. Because ministry doesn't take a vocational title. But you cannot finish well unless you start. You cannot finish your race alone. It's got to be Him. Runners, take your mark. Ready, set, go! Miracles, signs, and wonders. Takes all the darkness out of you and replaces it with eternal light. The equipping of the saints so that we can do the work of ministry. It's not me. It's Him that's doing everything in me. Everything that still was there planted in me is just reactivated. If He did it for me, I know that He can do it for them, and He will do it for them. Your now is here. Isn't that awesome? If there's still breath in your lungs, there's still purpose in your life. There's still people you're called to reach. God truly provides for the vision He places inside you. If God has placed something inside of us, it's not just for us. If you're doing it alone, you're doing it wrong. As a child, did you ever have a desire to do something and know it probably wouldn't ever happen? Well, Terry Seacrest, her story's in there. She's an amazing woman. And uh, when she was uh, younger, uh, about 9, 10, 11 years old, her parents came to her and her siblings and said, we're going to give you an offer. You in turn can learn how to dance or you can learn how to play the piano. And like any little girl would say, she said, both. Parents go, no. And she's going, both. She says, they go, no. So she chose being a pianist. She's an accomplished pianist, worship, Chopin, you name it. She is amazing and has a voice that goes with it. It's just so heavenly. It's amazing. So after she was over 50 years old, somewhere 50, 55, she thought, I never learned how to dance. And this is a dream that she had had as a child. Whatever your dream is, it's not too late. It's not too late. And so her desire was to learn how to waltz so she in turn can worship the Lord, worship the Lord and dance. Well, she's, I think, 6'1", you know, long feet, long hands, not the typical ballerina type person, but that was a desire of her heart. She took a few lessons. Then I saw her. We've done some meetings together around the United States, actually, and including the Philippines. And, and she would just worship the Lord. Oh, the power of God would fall while she was just just worshiping the Lord in dance. And, and she goes, this is really awesome. I'm, I'm going to learn how to do the salsa. I'm going to learn how to do this. I don't know all the dances, but she learned how to do this and this and this, all these dances. She was living her dream. Well, they came to town. They said, we want to have a contest here as a fundraiser in this city in uh, North Florida. And we would like for you to be in one of the competitions, you and your dance partner, to be in the competition here. And, uh, and so she goes, sure. And they, they named it Dancing with the Stars. 
And so there was five dance partners, couples that danced. She got out of all the judges, she got all tens and she won the award of being the best dancer ever. How awesome is that? You know, and it's like a dream fulfilled. Some of you have dreams. This is a time to see those dreams fulfilled. This is a time when God wants to restore what the enemy has stolen. There's a story in there by, the, by a lady by the name of Fallon. I've known her since she was probably 13 or something like that. And she got married and her a wedding gift was beautiful diamond stud earrings. Beautiful. I think they're I think they're about a carat each. So really, really nice diamond earrings. And so she wore them at her wedding and she was gorgeous. She was beautiful. And then all of a sudden, one was missing. Like literally within like a couple of weeks after the wedding. She was heart sick. She was like, no, no, not my diamond earrings. Because if you gotta wear a pair and you lose one. The other one just stays in the drawer usually. And so she looked toward everything up in her house. And on the eve of their, I believe it was their 11th anniversary, all of a sudden she took some clothes out of the dryer and there it was. There it was, her other diamond stud. Just like that, it showed up. And I wanna encourage you, things that have been lost God's going to restore. This book is going to encourage you in so many ways. I really, really want to encourage you to get the book. Just don't quit. Don't give up is is in the Bible over 30 times. Why is it in there 30 times? Because people didn't listen the first time. You know, here we have Jesus. How many times could he have quit? He said, Lord, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. I don't want to do this. I really want to quit, but you want me to do this. He says, I will do what you've asked me to do. And what God wants to do, he wants you to see your dreams fulfilled. Things that you've lost, may it come to the front. May it come to fruition. And I have another story. A lot of you are familiar with Steve Harvey. And well, why are you losing, using him? He, his goal, his dream was to be a comedian. And there was no way. He kept going from place to place and it just wasn't clicking. It just wasn't happening. He was funny. He did this, he did that. And, and he just wanted to do it. And so he was living out of his car He calls his dad and he says, I have $39 to my name. I'm just going to come home. I can't make it as a comedian. Heartbroken because this is what he felt that he was born to do. And so at that point, he checks his voicemail, didn't have a cell phone at the time before that. So he checks his voicemail and it says, we have an opportunity for you to be on the stage in New York and we'll pay you $750. Wow, that's awesome. He didn't have enough money to even get to New York. He didn't know what he was gonna do. He's like, here's an opportunity of a lifetime and I can't because I don't have enough money to even get there. And he goes, okay, now was that this Sunday or like the following Sunday? which was just like four days away, first one. So he's like, let me check that voicemail again. So he calls the voicemail again, and there's a secondary one. Now he's like in Florida, and it says, we, have, we would like for you to come for two nights, and we'll give you $150 per night for you to come and show up, Friday, Saturday. So he goes, okay, I have enough money for gas to get me there, no hotel, because he's sleeping in his car. So he gets in the car, drives over, does the two gigs, and at that point, he has enough to buy a ticket to get to New York. Well, in New York, they just kicked Jamie Foxx 
off of this platform, off the stage. They just kicked so and so off the stage. They and they just they booed him off. Now these are people that have made a living now as a result of that. And, and he goes up there and he goes, man. He goes, it's really serious here. It's really serious, you know. And he goes, it's a tough crowd. I don't know what I'm gonna do. And so he got up there, and not based on all of the stuff that everybody told him, that they're gonna boo you off the stage and you'll be ruined for life. He didn't listen to that. He just got up there and do what he, and he did what he was born to do. So he gets up there, woos the crowd, they go crazy over him, think he's just sliced bread or whatever you wanna call it, just the best thing that has ever, person who's ever been on the, on the stage. And I was like, whoa, and then now what? Well, can you come back tomorrow night, next night, next night? He was there for several years, and he ended up and he headed up that comedy stage for years. That launched his career. He called home four days, five days before. Dad, I'm done. I can't do this. I'm coming home. Many of you are at that point of like, Dad, Mom, I just need to come home. I can't do this anymore. I can't hold on anymore. And God's going, just don't quit. Don't quit. The book is filled with probably 20 more stories, testimonies that I didn't share with you today. But in here is so many encouraging stories about a different situations. There's one in there and ends with it hadn't happened yet. And yet I'm doing all the preparations for that to happen. And I wanna really encourage you, invest in your future in this book and read it, allow it to really, really bless you. I wanna share some insights. What, besides what I've shared today, what will this, what is the benefit of reading this book? Overcome negative voices and criticism. Find peace and joy in the midst of the pain or in the midst of the waiting. Follow the voice of God, not people. Follow the voice of God as God leads you, as God guides you. Get rid of any anger, unforgiveness that attacks your strength. Keep believing God's promises no matter what your circumstance, no matter what is going on that may not be lining up to what, what we're talking about here and walking out what he's called you to do. This is a time when you just don't quit. Several of you are, I'm sensing in my spirit, word of knowledge, whatever you want to call it, that some of you are right at the teetering point. I just, I can't do this. I can't be staying in real estate anymore. I'm just not making it. I can't stay in this. I'll never lose weight. You know, and you just, what your goal, your, your weight goal, what is it? And then you're like, I'll never get there. I'll never get there. And then all these things, and you, you need to shut your own mouth and start confessing out of shut your mouth regarding negative, open your mouth on the positive, that I am down one pound, hallelujah, rejoice in the one pound. And it's like, I am, I've, I've, got, I've got somebody that wants to list their house with me. Oh, hallelujah, that's awesome. And just don't quit. Now, there's gonna be a time when God may change your direction and this is the way we've always done it, and we will continue to do it this way, no matter what we're, you know, be flexible. God may give you a new direction, an enhancement of what he has already told you to do. And be sensitive, and it says here, as he leads you and he guides you. I believe that God, this is a book that's been burning in my heart 
for many, many years. And I'm so excited to actually have the book in my hands, making it available for you. Because right now, and, and over the last few years, great opportunity. Let's just quit. Let's, I'm done. I'm going to quit the church. I'm going to quit the ministry. I'm going to quit the marriage. I'm going to quit this. Just don't quit. Just don't quit. God has so much more for you. And many times people quit right at the brink of crossing over into all that God has for them. So Father, right now, I just come against any form of discouragement, any and all forms of discouragement, negative input. Oh, that's beneath you. Or you can't dance. You're too tall. You can't be in the armed services because you're too short. Okay, what are these things? What are these areas that people have tried to talk you out of your dream? This is a time to see your dreams, your prophetic words come to pass. So Father, I thank you that you're opening up their eyes to not quit and to keep pressing in because you have a lot more for them. And Father, I thank you for that. I thank you for giving them even greater courage to fight for what you've told them is rightfully theirs. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to encourage you to get your copy, miraclesHappen.tv. Order it today. Once again, miraclesHappen.tv. And get your copy today. I want to thank you for watching today. If you want to have somebody pray with you and agree with you, I want to encourage you to go to miraclesHappen.tv and you can send in a prayer request and you can also call the ministry at 281-789-7500. And I want to encourage you, get somebody to stand with you, agree with you, because one can put a thousand, Two can put 10,000 to flight. And so this is when you come together and come into agreement for supernatural breakthrough in your life. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Miracles happen. We look forward to seeing you next time for another amazing Miracles Happen episode. Miracles Happen. Thanks for watching Miracles Happen. Contact us at miraclesHappen.tv or give us a call at 1 281 789 7500 or connect with Joan on Facebook at facebook.com slash Joan Hunter. And make sure to join us next week for Miracles Happen. God is a God of hope who heals the body, spirit.